Hello everyone and welcome back to Morrowind here on Twitch and later on in YouTube and uh, to an, our new location of Satrit Mora where we haven't even visited previously yet. So, first time. And apparently dirt. And apparently dirt. We arrived into a place. To say to me? Apparently there's dirt. Maybe you should clean. If there's that much dirt. Just saying, Iniel. Just saying. Because apparently there's a lot of dirt. You have something to say to me? No. So, skink in a trish shade. I think I was meant to talk to you from the one other uh, mages guild. <laughs> dirt. You're very dirty, just saying. <sighs> yeah, yeah, I know I got that, but uh, let me just talk to you. I need to detect creatures potions. Yes, of course, soft skin. Take this potion back to Edwina alone with my apologies. Speak with me again no time you are here. I may have some duties for you, evoker. Well, would you have some duties? And yes, very deceased. Oh yes, you're deceased. You're the dirty one. <laughs> yes, yes. For now, just deliver the potion back to Edwina in Aldrun. Alrighty, alrighty. I just gotta remember that that potion is for Edwina, not for us. <sighs> go ahead, stranger. I would think that go ahead, as in get away from this place. Outside at all. So what do you want? I don't want anything. I'm I'm going out. Uh, a burial shrine. Wolverine Hall. Then just try to figure out which is the right way to go. That's the fighter skilled. How high are we? In the, this tower, Wolverine Hall. Oh, well, might as well. <laughs> I want less corpus in my body. Yeah, yeah, it might be preferable. It might be preferable. Uh, do you also suffer from it, Chim Chim? Do you also suffer from corpus? Oh, we're outside. Okay, this takes us straight into the water. Interesting enough, I kind of feel like we should have at least had a look at the Satrit Mura more, but I guess now that we're here already in my body. No, I'm fully normally corporal. Hmm, interesting. Quite intriguing. That's my brother. But not in the army. That's my brother. Uh huh. Okay. Well, fine. If you say so, Chim Chim. If you say so. Ah. <sighs> okay. I think I would like to have some water walking. And then we are just simply going to be heading off. And I guess we should also possibly. Go on ahead and equip these just for a little bit. I have no idea where we are. I was thinking that we probably hit the rock, and so we did. Um, well, where the hell are we? <laughs> Although he might be searching now, I don't know if he is a searcher or not. That's a very excellent question. But yeah, where are we? I was thinking that we should be on the land now. However, I probably need to see where I am actually going sometimes. Nonetheless, ooh, the first time we're gonna be seeing the structure that is a Telvani Tower. I always enjoyed Telvani to Towers. Tarnitkide, what did I do now, Jim Jim, to tell? What did I do now? 
There it is. The Levani Tower. <laughs> Why do you know ask for my random questions? I I just like asking the same questions because like how am I supposed to know? Aw, poor wild guar. One shot, one kill. One shot and a one kill. <laughs> The which you couldn't possibly know the answers to. No, why would I know the answer to Dell? <sighs> Water cannot be um, fought to. <laughs> Honestly, I'm sucked. Aww, quite sad. Why would you do such a thing? Try to ask me another question. We'll see if I answer then. How do I know where we are? We are on Morrowind. Do you know Morrowind? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. We are at Morrowind. Morrowind is the place we are at. And uh, Satrit, Mora and water basically. And how the hell would I know the exact place though? Considering the fact that I was like uh, running blindly at the water, my good sir. What is the average airspeed of an un... Let it swallow. Unladen. Uh, unleaded swallow. I was thinking, uh, what? Even more. Unladen swallow. I don't actually remember what swallow meant either, so... That's kind of a hard question indeed, when I don't even remember what it means. So, yeah. A little bit of a problem there, I would say. A little bit of a problem. And that isn't as random a question, or it is extremely unrelated to Morrowind, my good sir. Ah, yeah, yeah, solo. <laughs> the terrible Monty Python joke. Why do you make terrible Monty Python jokes, Tim Tim? Why, oh why? Oh yes, here is the actual door, if I wouldn't be missing it. <sighs> I'm sure I don't need a sword while entering into this place. Hello, yes, pay that for which is the direction I need to be going. <laughs> it's a condition. Look it up. Okay. Have you come to plunder the dungeon or have you got corpus disease? Or did you come to see Divyat Fur? I'm Peter Fur. I'm the wife of Divyat Fur. One of them. Sort of. Sort of? What does that mean? I would like to first of all, because you're sort of a wife? What does that even mean? There, <laughs> there, Monta Pitonis. Also known as Lame. That's a lot of options, lady. <laughs> Bet you get all types here. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, you're a five of the Yes, well, not five in a married sense, but, you know, paramour, consort, something like that. It's a bit awkward, really, because, well, uh, he made us uh, do so. Though we aren't really his daughters or anything, it's like we are where his daughters, because he made us. You see? Friends with Penevis Nuff said, sort of, but also they were made by him in some way. Not as a daughter way, but some way made. So, created like golems question mark? Uh, <laughs> I didn't remember this dude had like loads of fives here. It does seem a little bit familiar now that uh, we are reading about it, but mm, interesting. Oh, cross wrote that before the daughter's bit. <laughs> well, they aren't his daughters. But it was like we were his daughters. But not like actually biologically daughters at least. So not actual incest. But I guess they were also 
I, I don't know if they ever were children or were they just created as, as ad adults. I would like to ask these questions. Huh, <sighs> okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, here to meet the very interesting uh, sort of a fellow of the world. He's up above in his study. I hope you can fly. You can't get up there unless you can fly or have potions. Sorry. I need to sleep to gain my magic up, though. So, many come and plunder the dungeon here. You'd be surprised how many people come in here trying to steal Lord Fur's treasures. He does have quite of a collection of relics and artifacts, but he keeps them down in the corp corprusarium. And who wants to risk catching corpus disease? Not to mention, who wants to get ripped in half? Pity, we don't see many good thieves here, just the stupid ones. Uh, it does seem to be the case, yes. Good evening, hyvää iltaa tajunta. Welcome to stream too. <laughs> Way too complicated for poor Chim Chim. So it seems, so it seems. So we arrived into the tower with the fellow that we were supposed to come and meet, Tajunta. And uh, we found out that apparently she is one of his fives that was also created by him. And uh, Apparently, there's been a lot of people who are thinking of coming and plundering the dungeon. But a lot of stupid people, more so. Not good thieves to doing that that sort of a thing. Ah, so yes, I, uh, I do happen to have the corpus disease, actually. <laughs> Less five, more five. I guess so. Everyone who gets corpus disease comes to our corpusarium. It's not very pleasant, but at least they're all fit and cared for. Yes, sounds lovely. Quite lovely. Uh, I would need actually to rest a little bit before really going... Oh, lovely, I can actually rest right here. Nice entrance. Oh yeah, and this is the place we are at. This is how it looks, the tower, Tayunta. When you haven't seen any Telvani structures before, it's very... Well, it's kind of using the mushrooms. Mushrooms, isn't it? Same way, like, that trunk is completely the same type of one as we can see here. So... Crowing them, shaping them into these uh, buildings. So, he was upstairs. Which way to go? Uh, we're gonna go down soon enough. Let's go up. So, Tower of Delphur, Hall of Fur. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I never made it to this part of Morrowind. Uh, you missed a lot. I love the Telvani structures, also they're very different. I never actually realized that they were actually made from the mushroom itself, but it seems to be quite clearly the case though, if you just like look outside how they look, and they are in a place where there's definitely possibility for that. A good skooma pipe, that's a great thing. Oh, there's even actually potions for exactly the Rising Force uh, potions. And everything. We could get the tournament mortars and everything from here. Hmm. Hmm. That sounds kinda interesting. Give me a chest of drawers. Well, there is definitely a lot of clothes. How convenient, yes. How very convenient. Let's see, there's a lot of stuff here too. A lot of very basic stuff, of course, but there's also a servant skull. So, pleasant, I'm sure. <laughs> How convenient, levitation potions, for me? They must be complimentary. That could be, possibly, yes, I think we could easily think so. Ooh, grand soul gem. Greater soul gem and a grand. And a lot of servant skulls. Ain't that nice. Ooh. 
Lives of the Saints. And the Consolations of Prayer. Pale Cream Spot and the Seven Ceremonies. Apparently, he is at least having religious books here. Ah, <laughs> oh, Kidev, who cares about the loot? What books does he have? <laughs> oh, you're already doing it. Yeah, I'm here doing it already. I'm looking through all the books. At least so that we know if we want to be going and reading some. Crasping fortune might be nice. The affairs of wizards may have. Consider we are sort of in the wizards guild ourselves. The affairs of wizards. Uh, the eastern provinces. Eh, not that many interesting books though. Unfortunately, Etra and Etra we also already read. But then there's a sack. So... That's good. Can we actually read it? Speak. Um, not but good of the gods. We the we the have no opinions about truth. Rumors flow from the. House of Troubles. I uh, count only the happy hours. No child has a sinner's heart. Let fate be your only law. No. Uh, fear of the fool is the beginning of wisdom. Interesting. Did you know that, Jim Jim? Did you know that, time that the fear of the fool is the beginning of wisdom? That's a nice one. <laughs> I'll see me in every hour. Walk always in the presence of your lords. Comfort is given, justice is taken. Learn by serving from the heart, the light, from the head, the law. The more you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, blessed I'll see me. mercy mastery, mystery. Force a keen fate. In the crucible, maybe crucible, we have buck lamp. Buck lamp. For some reason, it's a buck lamp. I don't really know the reason. <laughs> I think it's more of a fear of looking like an idiot. I'll be honest. Maybe, maybe. So let's have a look into here still. The Lunar Lorecom, that I haven't seen before and it increased our alteration. So I think we should be reading this. Alrighty, let's do that. The Lunar Lorecom, Pythalotrun. <laughs> I did a lot better once I learned not to worry so much about it. Good. Very good. That is definitely better. I will not go into the varying accounts of what happened at Adamantine Tower, nor will I relate the war of manifest metaphors that rendered those stories unable to support most qualities of what is commonly known as narrative. We all have our favorite Lorcom story and our favorite Lorcom motivation for the creation of Nairn and our favorite story of what happened to his heart. But the theory of the Lunar Lorcan is of a special note. Uh, also, that non-Australians will believe anything about Australia. Although everything I've said here about Australia is completely true. I'm not so sure about that anymore. Chim Chim, just saying. Considering you state first that everything you say about Australia anyone will believe and then you say but anything that i've told here it's totally true it's totally true by the way no doubt in me at all i'm not sure i trust that i'm quite completely sure it's so true well maybe you should be thinking about your statements in the future the emus really did win that war the war between the orchids and the emus 
and that's why emus got the Australia and orchids got the Africa. <laughs> Is that what it was all about? Or was it a war between the emus and the kangaroos? Was it a lot newer war? Who knows? I don't. <laughs> I thought that was the kangaroos. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I did ask about later. Wikipedia about the emu war. I haven't read about it. But I was thinking that probably something to do with the kangaroos to be honest. But it, I thought that it was just a funny idea that the uh, two type of birds that are both big would have had a war. It's in Wikipedia so it must be true. Totally. Everything that is in Wikipedia is always true. No one ever writes something incorrect there. Ever. Or anything ideological or from an ideological perspective at all. <laughs> I need to look into this. I will probably look into the emu war as well, to be honest. Yeah. In short, the moons were and are the two halves of Lorcan flesh divinity. Unlike the rest of the gods, Lorcan was a plain planet. And okay. That participated in the great, great construction. Except where the eight lend portions of their heavenly bodies to create the mortal plane, plaint planet, Lorcan's was cracked asunder and his divine spark fell to Nern as a shooting star, to impregnate it with the measure of its existence and a reasonable amount of selflessness. Masser and Segunda, therefore, are the best of indications of the dichotomy. The glow and duality, according to Artyom, that Lorcan legends often rail against. Ideas of the anima, animus, good, evil, being, nothingness, the poetry of the body, throat, and moan, silence as the abortive, and so on, setting the night sky as Lorcan's constant reminder to his mortal issue of their duty. Follower, uh, followers of this theory hold that all other hard stories are mythical decorations of the true origin of the moons, and it needn't be said that they observe the hollow crescent theory as well. Okay. That was sort of strange, mayhap. Sort of strange. Oh, they have a pleasant fire here to enjoy and everything. A very a pleasant. I, I, I do feel that I probably should take one of these just as a security. And then up. You need to be looking up. Up, up and above. Levitate. You failed casting the spell. Can I rest? No. Fine. Fine. <laughs> They're complimentary. Clearly. Yes, clearly. Jim Jim, I'm sure. Sounds just about right. Die. <laughs> uh, if it ain't nailed down, it's coming with us. Totally. <sighs> okay. No. Wrong hands. I need my casting hands. Okay got up into this level at the very least. So, I think you might be the person that I'm looking Do for. You want something? Yes, Devate Fur. Hello. Devate Fur. Say, so, that's an interesting tremor piece you have there. What can you tell me about it? Offer the tremor artifact as a gift. A gift? For me? How thoughtful. 
and shrewd. I suppose you know I am a collector, and that Suzuki gift is bound to please me. I congratulate you on your diplomatic skills. So, why have you tried to putter me up? Come to consult the great divide her? You have the divine disease. Want to plunder the danger or leer at my daughters? So, are they wives or daughters? I'm not sure at all. So totally, absolutely, how many do actually come and try to plunder the dungeon? When you live for thousands of years, you need a hobby, something you love, always sparks your interest. I collect treasures and invite thieves to steal them. I'm a collector and a sportsman. I collect enchanted items and ancient artifacts. have uh, quite a few tomb pieces. And as a sportsman, I love letting thieves try to steal my well-guarded treasures. Like the ones up downstairs, just a little bit. Only a few rules. One, don't hurt the inmates. Two, don't hurt my daughters. My warden and guards can look out for themselves. <laughs> this is the best looking dumber guy you've ever seen. No homo. He does look good. He has a pretty sweet looking armor too, to be honest. Your warden. Wish high guy. The Argonian is my warden of the Corpusarium. Quite a fighter. Duff as nail, self taught. Works out with my daughters who are no slouches at the martial arts themselves. Wish the guy was one of the last of my slaves. Freed him, and he wouldn't leave. Kept him on as a hireling, then made him my partner. Excellent fellow. Fine companion. Not an intellectual, you understand. But good company for me and my daughters. He does have a nice beard, yes. Very majestic. Very majestic. So you're saying that he looks way better than Felin Zaretti? Is that what you're saying, Jim Jim? Now I know what you think. Hmm. And cheese. So, uh, what about your daughters? <laughs> he keeps on bringing up the daughters, yeah? Not bad for something born in a jar, eh? Charming and talented. Not daughters, really. A little project, a side benefit of my research into corpus disease. Made to myself, my own flesh. Nice, aren't they? Alpha fear, beta fear, delta fear, and oops fear. Quite a comfort to me in my old days, huh? <laughs> Yes. Belanga totally wrote the bear that the beard, yes, yes, right. Um yeah. So born in a jar. How a pleasant. So uh Alpha Fear is the sharpest of my girls in wit and tongue gets on my nerves sometimes, but conflict is the spice of life. What about Beta Fear? Is the sweet one eager to please and be pleased. An excellent cook and a lovely singing voice. What about Delta Fuhrer? Delta Fuhrer is the efficient one, organized and orderly. She acts as our steward, manages accounts, maintains supplies, keeps the tower and corpusarium running. And uh, Oops Fuhrer. As the girl with the biggest heart, she takes care of the inmates of the Corpusarium and helps with my research. Researches. Even. Mm. So, what do we wish to ask then? So, you said about the corpusarium or the corpus disease that it's a divine disease the magical principles of corpus disease are illusive and miraculous 
Far more subtle and powerful than any conventional sorcery or enchantment. I'm persuaded that it is in some manner the curse or blessing of a god. Perhaps both a curse and a blessing. The victim, of course, cannot appreciate the marvelous nature of corpus. It saps the mind and destroys the body. But to a wizard, it is a profound and glorious mystery, a riddle worth long lifetime to study. How lovely. So, otherwise, corpus disease. How interesting. Did you know that corpus makes you immune to disease? Have you ever heard of the prophecies of the Nevervarine? Ashlanders say the Nevervarine will be immune to disease. I've always thought, maybe I have the Nerovarine town in my corpusarium, and I don't even know it. <laughs> the Nerovarine is a fat, disgusting corpus monster, and mad as a marsh rat. Wouldn't that be funny? Explain that you may fulfill the Nerovarine prophecies, actually. That's a fascinating story you tell. So, you might be Dinera Marine. Means nothing, of course. Corpus victims have all sort of delusions. But let me think. I've got a potion. In theory, it should cure Corpus. Doesn't work, though. Probably kill you. Kill all my test subjects. But you've got nothing to lose. Before I give it to you, I want you to look around below in the corpusarium. Know what's in the store if you don't take the potion. And while you're there, I want you to pick up a pair of boots from a victim. Calls himself Yakrum Bagarn, my oldest patient. Handy fellow, fixes things for me. Bring the boots back, and then you can have the potion. <laughs> Straight up through interesting tactic. Yes. So they are in the corpusarium. I collect victims of the divine disease in my corpusarium in the caverns beneath my tower. Poor devils, wretched existence, constant pain, precious appetites and passions. No reason at all. Mad as March rats, but marvelous too in their way, completely immune to disease, live forever, barring accidents. Ancient wizards need projects to keep them occupied, and the corpusarium is mine. Yes, what a hobby! Would you guys love that sort of a hobby? I'm sure you would love a hobby like this. Have your own daughters as your fives, like in the made in the chart type of uh, daughters, and then have a corpusarium and uh, investigate that and do all sort of interesting magical experiments and tests and uh, everything, I investigations, uh, research. Would you love it, Jim Jim and Tayunta? So, I gave you the trimmer piece. Thank you for your gift. Is there anything else I could be asking? I can ask about the Populion Index. <laughs> I think I'd call it stamps instead, thanks. <laughs> Come on, I'm dirty with their own limits. <laughs> uh, well, hey, but they're not actual daughters. Sure, they're made of his flesh, but he hasn't exactly conceived them. So I don't know where the limit is supposed to go there. <laughs> Come from, yeah. Totally kappa. Uh, properly on index though. Oh, that thing. I was just going to give it to my corpusarian inmates to play with. Do you want it? You can have it. Oh, thank you. I would love to have it. Yes, I'm. Mm. Okay, where is it? Oh, so many more books. Debate. Divides a 637th key. Interesting. Why so many keys? What is it specifically this key? 
I guess I can take this then. Indarion Propulion Index. Um, maybe I should shave before that, just to make sure he ain't going to get mad. <laughs> if it's in a feels like I missed something good there. Here, yeah, I would say that you sort of did. I would say you sort of did. Stop looking for loopholes, kid. <laughs> And hello, Visineko. Hope you are uh, doing well. And welcome to the stream of Morrowind. Yay! We gained ourselves a finger, so to speak. Well, properly on finger thingy. I don't know where exactly to 100% use it, but it's kind of hard to explain. There's a guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Jim Jim explain this. He looks after the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> There's some weird stuff. Nothing will ever be the same again. And he has hot daughters. Yes. Made from his own flesh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's very conflicting. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, he made them in a jar, you know. Uh, they subjects and all. All good, though. So, not really his daughters, in a sense, but... Yes, and a lot of servant skulls. The legendary scorch. Certainly haven't read that one, surely. I should be reading it. Not till the very evening they came, answered he, and then told of his dealings with Mehrun's Dakon's troll, saying that Makan would find it easier to whistle on the wind tracks and go on a full servant than to fight his toads. Then said Makan. Now see to thy safety henceforward, and seek to thy parts and thy pride. Oh, this mullet of mine, the Malakat's scorch, will meet with thine year of a surety. For quick as I can cry quality, though eight harms thou couldst boast of, subspumps uh, thou shalt comb on thy brain pan. Brain pan? Pan. Brain pan. Though that breaketh the hours of the dead. Hours of dead dead. I have no idea how to say all of that. Um, yeah, okay, that seems completely reasonable. I was thinking that you would be completely up for it with Seneca. Totally. It's awkward because we kind of want him to cure our disease. <laughs> kind of, kind of, yes. It's Vilication, the May Scourge, blessed of Malakad. A Makkan's legendary weapon, forged from sacred ebony in the fountain of Fickle Dyer, has never ever been the bane of the Dark King, and many a black spirit has been hurled back into oblivion with a single blow of this bold defender of the fear friendless. Mm. Scorch now hangs within the armory of the battle spire, ready to take up in the name of the Emperor against the Deatric Lords. Right. Right. The posting of the hunt. So many that we have certainly not even seen ever before. Star Lover's Lock. Um Spirit of Nirn, God of I Mortals. Uh, less roots on the waters of the oblivion. The Airtrium Heresy. Yeah, relatively valuable books, most. Haven't seen this heresy book either. Hmm. Or the waters of the oblivion, and then these all uh, are at least. Like, not those two, but these two are definitely something we have never seen before. The postings of the hunt. Most of them are pretty. Difficult, are <laughs> difficult, valuable. Uh, is there the weird old finish that is hard for you guys to read? Yes, there is definitely. Like if you go and start to be reading Kalevala, for example, then that is difficult for me. And uh, of course, like uh, it was originally some early writing, written text in Finnish is pretty weird. Yep, totally. Like um, Agricola, Mikhail Agricola. Uh, made the Finnish language, was it 1500 something? Somewhere along those lines, and he still used a lot of different type of letters. Yes, it's definitely a very different different type of uh, written language. 
than the <laughs> modern one is, absolutely. Are you made to read them? Not really that much. A little bit like just a C, but not really. <laughs> like we were made to read Shakespeare. <laughs> There's some funny sentence, can't remember it now though. Mm. But yeah, at least I wasn't made to read a lot of it. A little bit, but not a lot of it. But so that you at least know that. <laughs> Makes you think of that. Well, I gotta look into that later on at some point. But okay. The writing in this book appears to be a hasty transcription, perhaps from dictation or copied from a longer work. The boasting of the hunt. Let no man say before a witness that the hunt has not been called, nor the rites declared, or the ancient offices observed. The ritual of the innocent quarry, also called the wild hunt, is an ancient rite drawing magical energy from the powerful magical stream that engulfs this realm. The creation and times the creators and times of the rituals are long forgotten, but followed properly, the right brings great power and prestige to the Hans men. The ritual pits that the all-powerful huntsmen and their crater and lesser dogs against the pitiful and doomed innocent quarry, called by tradition the heir, after the mortal creature of human hunts. At once the huntsman is transported by the exquisite thrill and glory of his might and dominion over his helpless prey, and at the same time touched by the tragic, noble and all ultimately futile plight of the innocent quarry. In the highest aesthetic realization of the ritual, the ecstatic rapture of the kill is balanced by the huntsman's identification with the sadness and despair of the innocent quarry, as in pieces the body of the innocent hare is torn. The huntsman reflects on the tragic imbalances of power and the cruel injustices of the world. Uh, <laughs> all these things were kidded to look into later. Yes, after she finishes her books from a fictional world. <laughs> oh yeah, I've seen that before. That spelling is insane. Mm, I gotta have a look into it later on then. But yes, lots of books and then lots of other things to look at. As the hunt begins, the lesser dogs assemble before the green crystal reflections of the chapel of the innocent quarry. Inside the chapel, the huntsman, the creator dogs, and the master of the hunt perform the rites that initiate the sanctify the huntsman, the hunt, and the innocent quarry. Then the huntsman emerges from the chapel, displays the spear of the bitter mercy, and recites the offices of the hunt. The offices describe, explains the laws and conditions of the four stages of the hunt. The track, the chase, the call, and the few to the kill. Stage 1. The track in which the lesser dogs drag the ground to flush out the hair. Stage 2. The chase in which the crater hounds drive the hare before them. Stage 3. The call in which the crater hounds trap the hare and summon the huntsman for the kill. Stage 4. The few in which the huntsman makes the kill with the ritual spear of bitter mercy and calls upon the master of the hunt to view the kill by ringing the town bell. The master of the hunt then bestows the bounty upon the huntsman's bolt, who has wielded the spear of bitter mercy in the kill. The master of the hunt also calls upon the huntsman bold to name the next hare for the next hunt, the hunt though the huntsman bold himself may not participate in the next hunt. The offices of the hunt, which the huntsman, master and hounds are solemnly sworn to honor, detail the practices and conditions of the hunt. These practices and conditions, also known as the law, strictly define all details of the hunt, such as how many hounds of each sort may participate, how the spear of the bitter mercy may be wielded, and so forth. In addition, the law states that hair must have a genuine chance to escape the hunt, no matter how slim. 
In practice, this condition has been defined as the availability of six keys, which if gathered together in the Temple of the Dead Rites permit the hare to teleport away from the hunt, and so elude the huntsman and his spear. It is inconceivable, of course, that the hare might actually discover the keys and escape, but the fawns must be observed, and tampering with the keys or sheeting the hair of a genuine chance of finding or using the keys is a shameful and unforgivable betrayal of the law of the hunt. <laughs> Would be interesting to try and explain to an elderly person the concept of reading a fictional book on a stream. Mm. Yes, I totally agree with that, Visineku. Totally agree with that. The ritual of the hunt grants the huntsman protection from all forms of attack, including mortal and immortal weapons, and sorceries of all schools. Huntsmen are cautioned, however, that the ritual does not protect the huntsman from the potent energies of his own spear, and cautions against the reckless wielding of the spear in close melee, darkness, or other dangerous circumstances. For a single touch of the spear, bitter mercy means instant and certain death for innocent hair or fellow huntsmen alike. The right to name a wild hunt is a grand and grave right indeed, as all but the high tetra laws are vulnerable to the potent sorceries of the spear of bitter mercy. The spear itself is therefore a terrible weapon, and it is forbidden to remove it from the crowns of the ritual hunt. So, that's sort of a book, and that's sort of a little story, and a spear. Well, well what about Star Lover's Lock? Sounds good at least. Hey, it's even a short one. Okay, sixth moon. At last, the battle spire appears to be falling into the hands of evil. Their many attempts in the past have failed until now. Dagon seems to have new minions at his side this time. These new horrors are not at all too powerful, beyond our magics and weaponry, but their numbers are feverishly great. We grow low on supplies and soldiers for this holdout. I fear the first. <laughs> and Simpson, yeah, I don't think my grandma even really believes in Skype. Hmm. Eight Moon. I have presented to a few remaining paddle mages my last hope plan. I will fight my way to the bowels of the battle spire, where I will mount Dagon Faber, my dragon companion. From his lair, we will take flight since the fair gate has been taken. Teleportation is not possible. Only paper can make such a journey to the Imperial Palace. Papre. I don't know how to say that. It's a name. There we will report the evil infection and return with the regimental force of rescue. May the powers be with you. Ah, uh, your grandmother never learned to use a mobile the telephone. Hmm. Yeah, in total, it's a lot easier to be an immigrant nowadays with the Skype and Google Translate. Like, if we think about back in the day when you moved, for example, into the USA, you lost the contact to all your family quite easily, after all. You think your grandma can? I can't, in all honesty, even remember if my grandma ever did, but after all, my grandma, the, last, the only one that I knew, pretty much died at the time, like... Was it the 95 or so that she died? So long time ago. Quite a long time ago. And there wasn't even a lot of mobile phones then yet. I don't know which year mobile phones started to really come up. It came a lot uh, pretty soon later on, but uh, not really at the time yet. Ninth moon. <laughs> you too young, kid. Well, I said my grandma died at 95 year, so, or around that age. Either it was 95 or 98, I'm not sure anymore, actually. Uh, no, it should be 95, around 95, yeah. Yep, yeah, that's when she died. 
night moon. It is as I feared. A carcass is all I have come to find. They have sealed the main cage so paper could not escape. I am not sorrowful though, for I will be eternally reunited with Tracone Papra. Hope for the living is lost. My name is Summer Star Lover. Tell my sister I am dead. And if all the seas were ink, I could not write enough how I shall miss her. <laughs> but so yeah, it was like 10 years before my mother switched the telephone, so probably not. Mm. Uh, let's address chords. I read. <sighs> Last heard song. Then there's the waters of oblivion. At least all of these books are very short overall. So, waters of oblivion. A hundred and twenty numbered ages in the void that faded folk had grown deep schooled in evil. Then the bright gods resolved to punish those faithless spirits and shatter the unruly caitiffs. Those hues and holy scatchers loathsome to the light. They repented exceedingly that they had gazed upon oblivion and seen there the first of dark kin and welcomed them as brothers and sisters. The principalities of victory beheld how great was the wickedness of the wayward spirits, and saw that they were bold in sin and full of vials. They resolved then to station the tribes of Tedra and smite Tarkin with hammer and ham. <laughs> I almost read hammer and ham. No, hammer and hand. Ah. But ever shall darkness contest the light, and great were the powers that spread it void and laid waste upon one another, and no oath might bind them, so deep were they in envy and perfidy. Perfidy? For once the portals are opened, who shall shut them upon the rising tide? <laughs> I remember when we left Australia, my grandma was crying. She literally thought she'd never see us again. Aww. Surprise, Skype. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Plus, of course, the modern times anyways make it a lot easier to even just visit, after all, than back in the day. <laughs> she had the motivation to learn to Skype, then she must have been surprised. I think she really was. We're living in the future, guys. The future our grandparents could only have dreamt of. Or even not dreamt of. Because hardly they could have dreamt of actually being able to... Like, the idea that you would be able to have a better contact, sure. But not the idea of... Uh, you know. <sighs> Tape movement, again. Very strange looking. Yeah, but of course, no specifics. Couldn't really be thinking that exactly like this it's going to be working or anything like that, even remotely. And no jetpacks, nor do you know what especially we should have. Do you know what we specifically should have? <sighs> I should drink. <laughs> no hypnotic pelvic horns, but do you know what we should have? What we totally, totally should have? We should have power boards. Like, Back to the Future told us what we should have already. That's what we should have. We should totally be able to hover. Yes, hoverboards. Back to the future. <laughs> you were going to say that, but you didn't, Jim Jim. <laughs> Let him concentrate. Mm. Trying to <laughs> drag the woman down with the pelvic motion. Yeah, it's kind of strange, though, I would what say. Kind of strange movement. <laughs> Yes. So, was there something else? The Octorian Heresy, I don't think we've seen, but 
Uh, maybe I'll remember to read it next time when we visit here. I don't want to read everything at once. <sighs> God damn it, too many books. The Book of the Deidre, Arcane Restored. Book of Life and Service, definitely haven't read. <laughs> Attracting them daughters. Uh, hmm, yes. But how about would be pretty neat, yes. Have you watched Back to the Future, Tayonta? Here's some sweet Aussie hip hop hat that hears you. Hmm, okay. If you say so. The ranks of the blessed. Be blessed are the bone men, for they serve without self in spirit forever. Blessed are the mist men, for they blend in the glory of the transcendent spirit. Blessed are the frat men, for they enter their rage onto the ages. Blessed are the masters, for they bridge the past and span the future. The litany of service, the bone man's oath. We die, we pray, to live, we serve. The master's voice, you swore to serve your lord. How lovely. <laughs> You're convinced that if our civilization falls, the future archaeologists will think we worship cats. <laughs> maybe, maybe, of course, really cool album cover. Oh, again, something I gotta be seeing later though, unfortunately. Well, book of the rest and endings then. The pages of the book of rest and endings are filled with obscure pits of cult mumbo jumbo. Hey, at least it defines it already to be a mumbo jumbo. The ritual for ending the frat men. From fifty fathers frozen in slave paths, ripped from the freight loom, sundered their life V, and lock tight in earth creep, hold firm in cray fast. Totally. 100% agree. Arcana Restored might not have read either yet, to be honest. Uh, I haven't read that. Dal Maroc's Keras Researches. Eh. Uh, should I read it? A little bit later, maybe. Oh man, I love that hoverboard song every time it came out of the radio as I throw the work on in traffic. Oh, hey. You remember it better now as well, or at least a little bit. There's an upper area, which is kind of unfortunate. Yes, sir. Hello, Alpha Fuhrer. You were apparently the smart one. I suppose you want to speak to the Fuhrer. Have you got corpus disease, or are you planning to plunder the dungeon? Always plundering the dungeon. You're smart. Get Corpus disease. Get killed by Corpus monsters. Get killed by Wishtakai. A very good plan. Plunder the dungeon of a 40,000 year old wizard. What could be easier? Yes. Yes. I totally agree. So, the Vaitfur? He is in his study. He's busy. He's always busy. And yes, Corpus disease I do have. If you got the disease, go down to the dungeon with all the other monsters. That's a lot of cats, Jim Jim. Lots of cats. <sighs> okay, we cynic, but this is our world. Technology that we never could have expect. We can talk to people across the world by flying to another continent. Unlimited information in our fingertips and we used all to look at cats. Cats are always present. True. True. There is truth in that matter, yes. Huh? There's some stuff there, too. <laughs> it's quite of a shame that you are allergic to cats, though, surely. Hmm. Well, I can't cast levitation anymore, so I might as well try to drink this potion. So we can go and explore a little bit more. I wasn't sure if this would be leading me to anywhere, but hey, it doesn't seem that it actually did. But I had to make sure if that was the case or not. I assume that also this doesn't then take me anywhere. No, it's just like a pretty decoration type of a thing. Type of deal. But 
I had to make sure because I couldn't be quite sure from that point of angle. Pretty looking though. <laughs> I'll write less from now on. <laughs> oh wait, is Nick or a cat? Hmm. Um Neko is at least also a cat like in Japanese, just as a word, but ouch. <sighs> okay. I wonder if someone will come immediately and try to arrest me when I would try to press into this bed. Hmm. It seems extremely suspicious. Your case of corpus has worsened though, but we were able to actually sleep in his bed. Huh. <laughs> well, kind of, I guess. At least I live like one. Hmm. Uh, so, but level up as well. You have ascended to level 12. You can't believe how easy it is. You just have to go. A little crazy. And then suddenly, it all makes sense. And everything you do turns the gold. That makes sense. You have to go a little crazy as in you getting a corpus disease and everything. Just more of everything. <laughs> like an asshole? Cats are people too? <laughs> I think it's whiskey time. Be right back, alrighty. Do enjoy your whiskey, Tayunta. Ah, <sighs> just for jokes. Alrighty. Okay, then we can go off in doing dungeons. And meet other daughters. <laughs> Way ahead of you, Tayunta. So you've been drinking a lot now, Jim Jim? Question mark. Enjoying loads of drinks. Door and draft level 60. Lock as well. Something that I would not be able to open, just like this. Corpusarium is in that way, though. Hello, Delta Fear. My name is Delta Fear. Did you want to see the Vet Fear? Have you got a corpus disease or are you another questing hero looking to plunder the dungeon? Yeah, totally. Really? Is that what you had in mind? Don't let me discourage you, but you do know that you are almost certain to get corpus disease if you enter the corpusarium. And I hope you understand how frightfully dangerous our inmates can be. And they do have cards, you know, quite good ones. You're free to try, of course, but I don't advise it. What about your, um, uh, husband? Father? Oh, thank you, Jimson, so much again. <laughs> 1,000 bits here. Thank you very much, Jimson. <laughs> I got my yearly bonus today, but my local rents are away. Ah, uh, so you've been drinking because of that? I showed around if Twitch supported it. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. I won't get behind that idea. It's unfortunately not the case in here. I should definitely change the one. Like, I have been... I had uh, made the one little clip of the music specifically from actually one music from Urkua Masters that I was thinking to have in one sheer. But at the moment I have it for the one bit sheer, which is kind of a uh, silly, but I originally thought that it would just simply apply to all bits so i want to be changing it to something a little bit higher number than just just a one bit sheer never hear it even um is this group divided to people who drink whiskey and those of us who don't really drink at all interesting ah it didn't do it why didn't it do it i'm very annoyed now it feels like i was asking for that one pit which is almost nothing anyways but <sighs> That's annoying. It worked when I tried it, tested it myself, like in the streaming software and so on, but <laughs> it's not gonna do it now. Don't waste your beats right now, Tim Tim. Maybe next Sunday. Maybe next Sunday. I'll, I'll see if I can change it uh, so that it actually works because it doesn't appear to be working. I apologize. Don't waste your beats. Cheers. When, when it doesn't work, stupid thing. Even though it's supposed to work, because I had changed it. <laughs> One 
go down and do it. It doesn't do it now. Don't do it, Jesse. <laughs> Uh, okay, maybe I should be reading forward so that you don't waste your bits because it's not wanting to do it now. Uh, it was a little clip of a music. Very short bit of a music. From uh, Urku and Masters. One music that I think fits pretty well the sheer type of sound though. It's not in the 50, Jim Jim. I know that it was definitely not there. <laughs> Jim Jim is going crazy with beats. I'm saying that don't do more uh, shearing right now, and it's not doing the freaking thing that I had I had tried it originally, but maybe it just has resetted it. So, like, uh, I'll... I'll <sighs> Jim Jim. God damn it. Stop it. Stop shearing. <laughs> I'm getting uh, flustered and you're doing too much sharing. Let me just read and let us get back into the story and everything, okay? <laughs> and yeah, you both should be having whiskey. And yeah, I guess this group is pretty much uh, uh, split between the ones that drink and the ones that who don't. Because I hardly drink. I drink sometimes the... what is it? Smirnoff ice, yes, that's basically what I drink time to time, from time to time because I like the taste of it, but I'm not ever actually drunk or anything. <laughs> totally worth it. I'm, I'm sure it was totally worth it, Jim Jim. I'm sure it was totally worth it. It was funny. I, I'll give you that. The thing is, I'm such a crazy fan of work and masters that I had the soundtrack on MP3 player when I was in a primary school. Uh, I was thinking that. I don't know, I did play it forward back then, but maybe I should consider playing it on, it on stream, considering it's such a freaking long the game. That otherwise I do need to do a lot of always editing of going and <sighs> cropping out the stuff and so on. I did play it future, but of course it's not like I actually still know anything how to complete the game or play through it. Even if I met some other species over there in the Urquan Masters. And I do enjoy the game, so I should definitely play more of it at some point. Maybe it would be easier for me if I played it when it's also a long game, specifically when you gather resources in a stream, mayhap. But I enjoy the music for sure. It's a very, very nice music. Mm, might be a st good streaming game because you can talk with the chat when you do busy work. Yep, I would think that that could be it. <sighs> it's not gonna do it, Jim Sim. Okay, enough sharing for now, Jim Sim. Okay, you've had too much to drink. I'm gonna try to be stopping you from drinking too much. And as in wasting your shears on a... <laughs> <laughs> okay, play your grandmasters. We'll do at some point then, for sure. I should also get back to Jacket Alliance too, because some people enjoy watching it. <laughs> I'm totally sober. Jokes on you. Well, doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like it, Jim Jim. Specifically when you say you're drinking whiskey and everything. <sighs> but yeah. <sighs> back to Morrowind. Uh, Lord Fur is in his study. I'm sure he won't mind being disturbed. We get few visitors here. You can levitate, can't you? The study is on an upper level, accessible only by the central flywheel. I'm afraid we aren't set up to accommodate barbarians or peasant. Understand? Go up the ramps to the Hall of Fear, then walk around, looking up until you see a shaft above you, then levitate up the shaft. Then look for Lord Fuhrer in his study. And the Corpusarium. <laughs> Just because I'm super doesn't mean I haven't been drinking. Mm. Right, Jim Jim. Right. Makes total 100% sense. You have been drinking, but you are 100% sober. 100%. Uh, this is not the Corpusarium. The Corpusarium is the caverns down below the tower. Just keep going down. You'll want to speak with Upsefur or Wishtakai. They attend to the needs of the Corpusarium inmates, victims of the Corpus disease. 
If you go down there, be careful. Many corpse victims are completely mad and quite violent. <laughs> Indeed, I'm fully eloquent, am I not? Totally, but it doesn't mean that you couldn't be drunk. Or, uh, oh, come on, or that you would only be eloquent if you're sober. Or does it? And thank the gods for spellship. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Like, it doesn't mean that you cannot be eloquent at all if you only when you're sober. Does it? I'm pretty sure it doesn't mean that, Jim Jim. At least I don't think so. Maybe others disagree. Maybe. Ah, okay, quick save before we enter into the corpus room. Darkness. Darkness, my old friend. We need a light in this darkness. When I drink, no matter how much I have my writing, it's as good as ever I lose my ability to walk. <laughs> That's funny. I have no idea, to be honest. Like I said, I have hardly ever drink that much. So, I couldn't say. I've, uh, the only, like, I've only drank as much as starting to feel a little bit warm and so on. But no other things. I've never drank a lot. Funny thing, alcohol has so many different effects depending on the user. It truly does. It truly does. So yeah, I've never had anything else basically. Just a farm feeling and that's pretty much it. So that you can feel it a little bit. Leave me. You don't drink because you get nothing from it. Alrighty. And this is the wish the guy. <laughs> I just sound more Australian, apparently. Interesting. I also have an accent which makes it impossible for people to tell. Hmm. <laughs> and yeah, that's kind of funny. <sighs> okay, you. I am Wistakai, Warden of the Carpusarium. I am here to warn you. Do not harm the inmates. If you come to blunder the dungeon, you must endure their attacks. And take your chances with me, the warden and protector. Um, plunder the dungeon. For his own amusement, the wet permits cheese to test their skills by attempting to steal the tissues. He keeps below in the corvusarium. The dangers are fearful, the inmates are savage, and they carry the most terrible disease on Tamriel. The treasures themselves are guarded by traps and terrors, and the cars must shall seem among them. Will they create delight in trying to kill you? Those are the rules. Abide by them or leave. Corpusarium. Lord Fear shelters that maintains the victims of the Corpus disease here in the Corpusarium. He does them a great service because no other could or would help them. He also does the world great service by keeping them here where they can do no harm to others. The inmates are sad, distorted monsters, angry and cruel, and their suffering are great. But they still live and feel, and I honor Lord Phil's care and compassion for them. Yes, totally, and you are the warden of this place. <laughs> I don't know what that says about my compatriots. I don't know. I don't know if all Australians and an Aussie accent Sounds like you guys are drunk, if that's what you mean by that. Now, is that what you mean, Jim Jim? Warden. I am the guardian and peacekeeper of the Gobsarium. I spent long years in service of Lord Fear, first as a slave, then as a free hireling, and now as a friend and a partner. He has been kind and generous to me, and I take his interest and the interest of those he shelters to heart. The treasures of these dancers I open to sort, according to Lord Fear's whim, and you're welcome to try to steal them, but I do find great sport in hunting the thieves. <laughs> 
National Social Condition. Damn it, I keep zoning out. Gotta try and concentrate on the game. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be hard to concentrate on the game when there's so much, uh, oh, well, good chatting and everything. Nah, just be good. Kira will take care of the game. <laughs> Stop those that need stopping. Kind of true, kind of true. But on the other hand, Diamond also has never seen this place. Neither have you, actually, Chim Sim. Do you not want to see how Morrowind's story continues exactly? Shows your toes that need socializing. <laughs> totally. Totally. Oh, Warden, Corbusari, and Plunder the Dungeon, and tour their attacks, you say. Do not harm the inmates. I will not tolerate you adding to their suffering. Indeed, they are brutal and ferocious, and they will kill you if they can. But you are their guest, and you may not harm them, or you will as were to me. <sighs> so yes, invisibility might be useful. Maybe I shall be using some of it in the future here. Hmm. You got faith in me. That's that's nice to hear. That's nice to hear. <laughs> Basic game mechanics, lol. Yes, I think it has the nail down. Maybe. Maybe. Just maybe. Well. Corpusarium bowels. Lovely. Well. I have nothing against any of you guys. There is a trap chest, which is 100 plus trap. So, not something that I would be able to go and uh, lockpick even if I wanted to. Surely. So, just uh, not really a lot of blundering to do yet. Because we cannot even open any of those chests. But, uh, you know, trying to explore. Trying to find the guy that we are supposed to find and everything. Um, hmm. I feel that I should be getting into that side. Mayhap. Hey, how, how many times do I must always fail at casting this stupid spell? Stupid spell and want to always fail. Always fail. It's not much worse than a sewer, which is basically what it is. Sort of. Maybe. Sort of. Am I going the right way? Am I going the wrong way? Good question. Hmm? We'll see. What is this location? Exactly. What's in here? <laughs> to boob shoot. Hmm. Okay. Some different spot to the corpus area. Um... I... Do I hear water? I guess this is like a tunnel type of thing. That guy at least would want to be coming and trying to kill us, so maybe I shouldn't go into there. That all... That just takes us to the Delphir Onyx Hall. <sighs> were we there? I think we were. Before, so I don't think we need to go there. There's also a chest. Eh. Into here, maybe? There's another chest that I definitely cannot open up. Um, yes. No opening up of that chest for me. So... I can see that you're there, I think. Yes. You're coming this way. I'm gonna make a great evade movement. I'm sure. Yeah, okay. You're right there. Right, good. I'm just going past you and... Ow. You're not nice going and hitting me like that. Maybe I should go there just to check which spot this exactly goes in. Because I have no exact idea. <sighs> Sure. Let's just go. Run. Not even a little stepping. Well, it was said that they will 
make us pay we make these guys suffer more than they have to suffer so just saying Garbosarium vowels would be the same place that I certainly was in before but yeah that's the start then there's a direction into this way as well so let's just investigate how exactly these places go <sighs> hello you lovely lovely looking thing I could loot this at least it's a skeletal corpse which probably has tried to be here doing the adventuring and looting and everything and there's a drum so these uh, guys I guess are happily sometimes doing that uh, I think this is water so I'm kind of scared that I will destroy my torch if I go here which I think would have been the case uh, I don't really see that there's much interesting here though, unfortunate as it may be. Fine. Have I been there though? Not sure. Is there something here? I don't know. So hard to see. <sighs> this is um taking me somewhere. Um more water. My stats are definitely down. More water that will try to destroy my torch. Which I wouldn't appreciate at all. Well. Don't really see mods in here though. Nope. Don't see mods. I think this is water is really an assuring thing to hear someone say. I I I could I could agree with that. It's it's probably not a good thing. What color is <laughs> But you know So difficult to see what you're trying to do sometimes and the problem with water here is also that it makes a horrible sound when it destroys your torch. Totally very terrible sound. Yep. Sorry, goodbye. <laughs> Considering we're at the bowels, it could be something else, possibly. But I'm not sure we are at the... Are we at the bowels? This is at least an old gate. Into some place, which again would have a trapped chest that really... Um... Yeah. Ow. That wasn't nice of you. That wasn't nice of you at all. I could I was almost like block there <laughs> it scares the sh it, it scares the shit out of me every time <laughs> yeah the destroying of the torch mm, it scares me too it scares me too i don't like it at all <laughs> yeah the, the sound of the torch going out <laughs> it scares most of the time me too me too this is the bowels where we visited, but uh, I just left from there. Because then went sort of uh, around and about, so to speak. Skeletal corpse. I don't mind if I do. Well. So. Maybe this way? Oh, there's another locked chest. Um, hmm. Where do I need to go? There's at least, so to speak, a path there. Maybe. Maybe that is the path that I need to go into. <laughs> Why is the destruction of the torch the most ter terrifying part of this game? Because it's such a freaking loud noise. That's why. Such a freaking loud noise all of a sudden. Ah, oh, I think we got it. We are in the correct place. Now, pay attention to the game. <sighs> Lame Corpus. Isn't it lovely looking? This is what we're gonna become. Basically. If we let the Corpus disease take us. Isn't it lovely? Yep. 
Yeah, it makes a horrible sound, Jim Jim. Looking at all the books give me more of a scared gold sweat. <laughs> Ay. But yes. Here is where we want it to be. Oopsie fur first. You're new here, aren't you? My name is Oopsie. Oopsie fur. I take care of the corpus victim. <laughs> he might be ugly, but at least he's happy. Maybe. Nothing I could tell you. Get lost. Uh huh. She really hates me. The corpus are in it's just one of its first many projects. Our mission here is partially humanitarian, partially research. He has been searching for a cure to corpus disease for a long time. A very long time. But in the meantime, we care for the corpus victims as best we can. The world outside is very cruel to corpus sufferers. They are much better off here with us. The Red Fuhrer, as you know, he's probably the oldest and most powerful wizard alive. Not counting liches or divine sources like Vivek, of course. And there may be some older in the West, or some as the Isles, perhaps. And I don't think there's a kind of more generous wizard alive. Not that there's much competition in the kind and generous wizard department, I'll grant you. <laughs> uh. Hmm, I don't know, it doesn't seem that different from a lot of people I know. Hmm, if you say so, Wissinek, if you say so. Wow, this is awfully judged for someone who works in a walking corpses all day. Judgy, yeah, true. And, uh, yes, do you guys know who he happens to be? Yakrum Bagarn, the guy who were coming to meet here. <laughs> what the hell? Question mark. <laughs> what happened to Santa? <laughs> uh, he is a dwarf, you see. He is one of the dwarf kind. Do you see? Trumor. Artifacts, trumor, ruins, trumor. Uh, the mechanical constructions that were in the trumor ruins. He is sort of in one of those too, isn't he? With his legs and everything. <laughs> you know that guy, spider like Magoo. Oh yeah. Totally. Tamriel lore. Maybe I'll read it. A <laughs> Trimmer Spider-Man. Well, let's talk to Yakrim Bakarn. That's how you get to, gets not to be so materialistic at Christmas. Hmm, totally. I'm sure that your kids would love it if uh, he would come up for Christmas. <laughs> Steampunk spider or something. Mm, totally, totally. So... You're here for the tumor pools. Tell my gracious keeper that I have done what I could. Only a tumor mage crafter could have done so much. But only idiots could have created this pool. It chains my rage that we must be judged by the works of such lack with blunders. So, your race. Once I was a master crafter in the service of Lord Krocknark. Chief Artigaf of the Great Second Empire Freeholds, and the greatest enchanter of this time. I could not match the genius of Lord Kakramak, but what he could envision I and my colleagues could build. All of that is gone, forever. I still retain my cunning, but my hands and eyes fail me. And my memories have long faded. My only consolation is each day to mock the gods who destroyed my race and content me to this bleak existence. <laughs> mm, why does this guy need boots? I don't think it's he that needs boots, but we were supposed to get the boots that he was fixing to the guy upstairs so that he would give us the potion, Jim Jim. Ugh, this is what happens when you don't follow the story, Jim Jim. This is what happens. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, your race. You said you have a bleak existence here. <laughs> My mom said never to trust a cook who didn't taste his own food. Hmm. So you said that we shouldn't 
trust hit the shoes because he doesn't test them himself? Question mark. Simulator for cobblers with spider legs. Hmm. Well, he can't really do a lot about the fact that he happens to be... Well, you know, not having his own legs anymore, I would say. Since the disappearance of the dwarves, I have been alone in this world. Trapped in the scream prison, I can scarcely move. And my fellow inmates are scarcely good company. The risk of corpus disease deters most visitors. But if you meet with cultivated minds untaunted by the terrors of the corpusarium, you might mention your recent interview with the last living dwarf. We got quite of an honor there, though. We are meeting the last living dwarf. So, tell me about the disappearance of the dwarves. <laughs> yeah, the saying in Finland that translates as a sh shoemaker's children walk barefoot. Yep. Um, thank you for the follow. Is it Fempro? Hmm, hopefully, I said it correctly, but thank you for the follow. Uh, disappearance of the dwarves. Hmm, I cannot say what happened. I was not there to observe. I was in an outer realm at the time, and when I came back, my people were gone. I left Red Mountain, wandering Tamriel for years, searching out deserted colonies, looking for a survivor or an explanation. Then, a long, long time ago, I returned to the Red Mountain, still looking for answers. Instead, I found Corpus disease, and I have been here ever since. I have theories, if you are interested. Yes, what is your theory? Why did your... Why are you the last of your race? Lord Cochranach, the foremost arcade philosopher and mage crafter of my era, devised duels to shape mutopoetic forces intending to transcend the limits of tumor mortality. However, in reviewing his formulae, some logicians argued that side effects were unpredictable and errors might be catastrophic. I think Dagrad might have succeeded in granting our race eternal life with unforeseen consequences. Zaza's full say displacement to an outer realm or he may have erred and utterly destroyed our race. Hmm. So you are truly the last living dwarf. This is how I style myself. I do not know for a fact that I am the last. But in my travels thousands of years ago, I never encountered another. And since I have been here, I often ask Lord Fuhrer, but he says he has never heard a credible rumor of another tumor on Tamriel or in any outer realm. <sighs> so, most likely the last living dwarf. So, yes, I did come here for the tumor boots. Lord Fear obtained these enchanted tumor boots from an unfortunate thief. And given the quality of their craftsmanship, little wonder the fellow came to a bad end. But I can do nothing for them. The fundamental enchantment is flawed. Might as well start over again. If such a pair of boots could still be fashioned in this benight latter days, but I've done my best. Take them to Lord Fuhrer with my sincere apologies. <laughs> and you think you say the same thing about the carpenters and the tragedy of being the last of your kind, yes, or at least very likely to be the last of your kind. I shall take this to the gracious keeper. I owe my life to Lord Fur. He took me in when I was a mad monster out of my mind. In time I emerged from my dementia, and now I'm quite lucid most of the time. Though my body is still a grotesque and useless prison, and I still have some feeble hope of a cure. Lord Fuhrer has tried many spells and potions, 
none have helped me, but neither have they harmed me. If anyone can cure this disease, Lord Fear can. So, there we learned quite a bit about the tumor. I don't know how much you learn about the tumor in Oblivion, for example, but I do love the fact that we meet an actual tumor dwarf here in Morrowind. <sighs> I do love that fact. And I didn't play a lot further from this, the main story itself. Well, I did some amount, yes. I remember one other at least uh, villages, the Icelander villages that I visited. I just don't remember how much there might then be. But I think we should be taking our bet of trying to take the potion. Just saying, it might be worth a try. I, I would prefer that than uh, just ending up like one of these guys, these lovely guys. So, Tumor puts, uh, puts a flying though. Cast when used. Levitate 1 to 100 points for 10 seconds on self. Hmm. Those, those are kind of useful though. Too bad that out of all the Tolkien races I liked dwarves the most. Too bad Elder Scrolls doesn't have more than half a dwarf. Truly, this is true. Truly, this is true, Vissineku. Well. Half a dwarf is better than no dwarf, at least. And like trying to look, how do I get there? But maybe I don't. Maybe it's up there. I guess so. Somewhere up there. Hmm. Huh? I guess this is the fastest way, anyways. Hmm. Do the force you like all speak with Scottish accents? Um, that's kind of a weird question, mayhap. Do they speak with uh, Scottish accents? Why do you ask that, Jim Jim? Do you know dwarves that talk with Scottish accents? Yay, athletic skills increased. I'm very happy to hear that. However... Ah, back to the tower and uh, let's test these boots. I'm sure he doesn't mind me testing them out. Quite a boots, I would say. Quite a boots. Aww. Look very strange on us to have these sort of big boots, though. Doesn't do it automatically though. Quite of a shame. Maybe I can then do it uh, through here. Kind of seems like it. Yay! And a fast flying at that. I gotta say. I'm sure he doesn't mind me using them just a teeny tiny bit to help us get up here. I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe. Ah, uh, yeah, pretty sick boots. Notably, the four craft dwarves. <laughs> For some reason, I kind of picture dwarves as Scandinavian. No idea why. Maybe they're a specific type of charisma. Hmm, mayhap, yes. I never played four craft games, so there's that. Hmm. I haven't played four craft games either, to be honest. Wait, says Sim Sim. You cannot imagine that someone hasn't played four craft games? Question mark. Aren't you Scandinavian? Well, not exactly. Depends how you define Scandinavia, Jim Jim. Uh, Finland yeah, is part of a uh, Venno Scandinavia, which would be just Norway, uh, Sweden, and Finland. Yes, but Scandinavia in itself isn't Finland. It's more the Viking areas. Vikings haven't been in Finland yet, so yeah. And no, I'm not Scandinavian. Fish. So there's a lot of Finnish people here. Do you feel lonely, Jim Jim, when you're surrounded by fiends? <laughs> hey, you're all Europeans from literally the other side of the planet. <sighs> but you live here now too, Jim Jim. 
You're amongst us now. <laughs> the things yes, are all right. What do you well, want? that's good to hear. You've met uh, quite a few of us here at least. Hello, David, for I brought you the boots. Well, did you get my boots? No boots, no potion. Yes, I did get you your boots. Potion? The boots first, please. And now I'll give you the potion. On the following condition, you must drink it here, before my eyes. It should act immediately and I need to observe you very carefully. Agreed? Yes, that's fine. Give me the potion. Good. Open your mouth and close your eyes. I guess I'll read first. <laughs> um, the beans are all right. Contradictorily obliged. I keep meeting them now. There were a few the other day at the airport. <laughs> and this testing block I started blowing is written by a Finnish lady. Hmm, quite have a lot of Finns then. We are a weird kind of people. As soon as you find one, you keep finding more. You're not the only one who's noticed that. Mm -hmm. Once you see a fin, you can't unsee it. <laughs> totally. Totally. 100%. But let's drink the potion. Good. Open your mouth and close your eyes. Good. Now swallow. Goodness. Good cree. Look. Look. It's working. Remarkable! Let me check your skin, your eyes, your tongue. Amazing! I think it work. No sign of the disease at all. Of course, you still have corpse disease, just like I planned. But all your symptoms are gone. Marvelous! I'll go try it out on some of the more desperate inmates. But I'll answer any questions you have before you go. So you said that I still have the corpus disease? See, no more symptoms. Amazing. A bit surprised myself. Hmm. So, we have been, uh, so to speak, cured. <laughs> Don't let him take any DNA samples. Oh yeah, there's a thread of clones with this guy. Yeah, <laughs> true. Quite true. Quite, quite true. Uh, so... The Divine Disease, yes. Oh, I guess I've asked everything. That looked like a spell rather than a potion, but fine. Now then, resist corpus disease is all of a sudden 100% because we already have corpus disease. Resist bite disease 100%. Resist common disease 100%. And uh, for the moment, we have of course those, but um, yeah. Common disease, blight disease, corpus disease. And we are extremely resistant all of a sudden from all diseases. <laughs> this crazy scientist. No sneaky clones for you here. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Bring on them disease cliffhangers. Yes, indeed. Now we don't have to be worrying about that no more. Our stats are still bad. At least they look like they are a little bit bad. So I'm not sure how that exactly is supposed to be. Eep. Splash. Sleep. Until healed. Thank you very much. So. We are cured. Sort of. Why do I still have a problem with that? That's kind of my question. Hmm. Maybe I should be trying to restore some of those. Because it uh, did uh, take some of them lower before. 
Restore willpower. Did I have willpower as a negative number? Yes. Okay, now it's back to 59. Then I would like to have a restore intelligence, speed, and personality so that I wouldn't... My personality wouldn't be so sucky. There's a restore intelligence. So we can actually have our intelligence back. Then we would require a personality one at some point and speed, which I'm not sure if we're gonna be getting. Restore personality, yay. So that we don't suck as badly anymore. Well, speed is going to be staying bad though. <laughs> hey, don't let your 26 in personality hold you back, Belen. You're beautiful. Just people misunderstand you. Yeah, well, hey, now it's all the way to 30. We're absolutely great in it now. Absolutely great. Uh, <laughs> that said, if you got rid best of personality to spare, pass it around. <laughs> Do you think that you have had better personality than Chim Chim? Is that really what you think? Uh, so we said Echo. I mentioned her just saying racist slurs all the time with low personality. Hmm. Or really him. Pelain is him. But unless you mean just me. Do you say that me as a kitty have a low personality? Sniff sniff if you say so. But Pelain is a man. With a beard. Or do you think that he could have that sort of a beard with just like being a female. I don't, don't think that he looks very feminine. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, I quite love personality with insensitively uh, brutal observation. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see. What do we want to do now? It's a great question. Probably could read the journal a little bit. Okay, so we got the boots. The elder seems to do my fear. He will give me the potion that I hope will cure my corpse disease. And we gave the boots from Yakrum Bakram and he gave me the potion. It didn't cure me, but it did remove all apparent signs of the disease. The vet Fuhrer said he didn't actually want to cure me. He just wanted to remove the harmful features of the disease while preserving its virtues. It worked. And now the vet Fuhrer is eager to test the potion on subjects in the cold Plosarium. But I must hurry back to report to the Spymaster and Sirs for the lost prophecies. <laughs> like most of my co-workers. Um, sounds good. Sounds good, Chim Chim, that most of your co-workers you uh, view in such a light. Sounds very good. I think we shall be casting a recall spell. <laughs> Pack the shirtless suit. There as well, but we also have a maid skilled quest that we can go and uh, do if we would actually manage to do this spell again. <laughs> <laughs> Some people, though. I literally had to end my stream earlier today because my house lord was too annoying in the background. Uh, that's annoying. That's for sure annoying with Sineko. Ashamed here. Yeah. <sighs> God damn it. Just cast a spell. There you go, Balezaretti. It's not that hard when you just put your mind into it. Let's see. Now we're back to pieces, and from here we can easily get all the way to Altrune and everything. And a return also to quest for that. I love the recall spell. I love the fact that you can just recall yourself to the other side of the world. Though I do not understand this guy. It's just still standing beneath the legs of this seal strider for some reason or another. Why walk when you can run? I don't know. Why do you stand here beneath the seal strider? Are you afraid of the rain? Is this your rain cover? I do not understand you. 
I'm lucky all my landlords have been absent. I had actually had to translate something to Dutch for my landlord the other day. Uh, in a terrible Dutch. Mm, sounds good. Sounds good, Tim Tim. It's cooler in the shade. Possibly. It still seems weird to me to say in how many customers go and uh, look for you in that location. Just just say. What's this? It's nothing. I have nothing to say to you, guy. I got something to say to the person here, though. Yes. There you are, Edwina Elbert. Here is your dead creature's potions from Skink. Yes, here it is. Excellent. Why don't I give you a potion more useful to evoke her in the field? So I got the explosive potion of shadow. Thank you very much. Do I get any advancements? In order to advance to Conjure, you must pay your guild dues of 200 septims. Will you pay these dues now? Well, sure, I guess. If I must pay gold to be able to advance more, fine. Excellent, Felenzaretti. Now that these formalities are out of the way, I can grant you the rank of Conjurer. Hey! Do you remember who can have also some tasks for us when we are a Conjurer? And Shira can have us some tasks, duties to do. I'm very happy to go back to Ajira. Um, but what do this would you offer? Cyrilon V in the Mage's Guild in Vivek has somehow acquired a copy of the Shimarva Medium. Okay, what is that? It is a sixth volume of Mara Porsal's Ancient Tales of the Tumor. Most of the ancient tales are not truly Tumor in origin, but this one may be an exception. It deals with some sort of a golem or centurion. Would you willing be, be willing to borrow this book for me? Borrow? As in, steal? Question mark. Sure, because I want to read that book too. So sure. Thank you, Felin Saretti. Cyril on me probably gives the book near in the Mage's Guild in Vivek. Near her. Do whatever it takes to get the book and then return it to me. If you're caught stealing, of course, it is a crime against the Guild, so be careful and take this scroll just in case. Thank you. I'll uh, have a look into that. And yes, a best friend of Jira. Ah. <laughs> because he doesn't like standing in the sun all day. He seems like the most relatable of all the Seal Strider ages. Totally. Totally. But yeah, aren't you a best friend? Ajira is the man. A woman. I'm not sure. Um, I think he's a man. I'm not sure either, to be honest. Air quotes. Borrow means steal. Yes. Just uh, borrow the book. But I certainly want to be reading the book. So at least I want to be going and finding it. Uh, could you take me to Vivek, or is that impossible for you? Yes, you can take me to Vivek. Please take me and teleport me to Vivek. Mage's Guild. <laughs> Ajira's accent is much woe. Thank you kindly. I try my best. With Ajira's accent. Ajira is such a good friend after all. Quickly, Where is the dude? Where are you the dude? That gave me the duty that was, so to speak, um, extremely difficult. Quickly no, it's not really that. you. Uh, where was that guy? Where was the guy that I would be looking for? It's definitely not you. And also, I had another duty here now, didn't I? Yes. Yes. Cyril right, on V. Where would you be hobby having your boo, I'd ask? Just gonna go and visit your closet for a moment. Don't you worry a thing. I'm not going, doing anything bad here. Uh, bar ben yeah, duty dude. <laughs> um, hmm, I don't know. <sighs> Ooh. Yay. Sirivan Lirium. And also pretty waters. I'll take both of them. Yep. Nothing to worry about. Kire, come out of the closet. 
I have come out of the closet when you asked of me so kindly. I just wanted to go and have a little bit of a peek in the closet. I think that should not be too difficult. Huh, there would have been a key to. Hello, Zero and V. Um, tell me about Treponius. I don't care what he asks you to do, the best thing for all of us is to ignore that scuttlehead. Last year he asked me to learn the language of the Silt Strider so we could question them about who they took to different cities. That is interesting thing to think for sure. Um, I don't think I should be asking about the book. Just say, I think it would be kind of suspicious. Or I think I would be the most likely candidate of having stolen the book. Considering I would then be also asking about it and then at the same time the book went missing <laughs> There's no point staying in the closet Totally no point no point at all. How can I help you? What kind of task have you gotten from Treponius is my question Treponius has he given you any duties? He asked me to chain an army of Troy to the foreign quarters count on have it told to a more reasonable climate just between you and me, I don't think he's the best candidate for Archmage. I take that lizard skinking salted more over Trebonius any day. I think I will agree with you, Cratia Julalium. I think I'll agree with you on that. The first hold revolt teach us some mysticism. Hmm. <sighs> it's a pretty long book, though. Fine, I'll read it, so... I... I... Mm. <laughs> I always support speaking directly. If they take it the wrong way, you kill them all. That's how I live my life. Okay, good to know, good to know. I know how to be... Uh, no, to be careful at least then. <laughs> the first old revolt by Marusia. You told me that if her brother won, she would be sister to the king of Veyres and Raman would want to keep her for the alliance. But her brother Helset lost and has fled with his mother back to Morrowind, and still Raman has not left her to marry me. Interesting. Uh, do you guys, by the way, remember who Helset was? Helset was the first son, I think, of the real Barencia. Barencia. The woman that, uh, the dark elf woman that we read a lot about, Helset was the son, for sure, that I remember. And I think he was the first son of the couple in that book as well. But her brother, Helset, lost. So her. It's the younger sister then. Her brother Helset lost and has fled with his mother back to Morrowind. So Parencia and Helset escaped and still Remen has left her to marry me. Left her. As in then the Helset sister. Yeah, Parencia be something. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Hmm. How could we forget Parencia? I was thinking that you wouldn't forget Parencia. But it's interesting that there's more uh, things about their family, kind of. <laughs> it's just lucky the trail of bodies doesn't lead home, eh? Totally. I think that's probably a good thing. Lady Giliana took a long, slow track of the hookah and blew out dragon spread, so the scent of blossoms perfumed her gilded chamber. You make a very poor advisor, Kale. I might have spent my time romance in the King of Cloudress or Avinor instead of the wretched royal husband of the Queen Morkia. Romance in the King of Cloudress. So, the King of Cloudress was the human that the Queen Morkia, as in Barencia. Queen Morkia. Morkia was the daughter of Barencia, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, she had married the King of Cloudress, on the other hand. Morkia was the younger daughter in that book of them. <laughs> Jim Jim will not. My home? Hmm, gotta master that misdirection too. Yes, that sounds good. But yeah, so... 
romancing I might have spent my time romancing the king of Cloudress or Alimor instead of the wretched royal husband of the Queen Morgia. No, like he's, she's saying that she might have, should have spent the time to try to get the cloud, cloud dress and not the royal husband of the Queen Morgia. Because she would be the future que queen, of course, of the Morrowind, basically. Kael knew better than to hurt his lady's vanity by the mere suggestion that the king of first hold might have come to love his dumber queen. So king of first hold and Morkia, I guess, were together then. Instead, he gave her a few minutes to pause and look from her balcony out over the high cliff palaces of the ancient capital. The moon shone like crystal on the deep sapphire waters of the Abyssian Sea. It was ever springtide here, and he could well understand why she would prefer a throne in this land than a cloud dress or Alinor. Finally, he spoke. The people are with you, my lady. They do not relish the idea of a remnant dark elvers ruling the kingdom when he is gone. I wonder, she said calmly. I wonder if it is, as the kings would not give up his queen for want of alliances whether she would give herself up out of fear of all the people of first old who most disliked the dumber influence on the court. But yeah, so Morkia is there clearly. I didn't mean to press that for sure. Uh, <laughs> these books build quite an impressive family tree if you can follow it, I imagine. Yeah, they definitely seem to be. They definitely do seem to be. Is this a trick question, my lady? Asked Gail. The Trepite monks, of course. Their credo has ever been for pure Altmer plotlines on Somerset and among the royal families most of all. But, my lady, they make very big allies. I know, said Kilain, taking up her hookah again thoughtfully, a smile creeping across her face. Morkia, Parencia's daughter. Morkia has seen to it that they have no power. She would have exterminated them all together had Remen not stopped her for all the good they do for the country folk. What if they fought themselves with a very powerful benefactress? One with intimate knowledge of the court of first soul, the chief concubine of the king, and all the gold to buy weapons with that her father, the king of Skywatch, could supply. Mm, I think it's the problem of the player focus narrative how to build background in which the player has no part. Hmm, guess so. Oh, well armed and with support of the country people, they would be formidable, nodded Gale. But as your advisor, I must warn you if you make yourself an active foe of Queen Morkia, you must play to win. She has inherited much of her mother's Queen Parencia's intelligence and spirit of vengeance. Like I said, Queen Parencia. She will not know I am here, though, until it's too late, shrugged Selene. Go to the Trebite Monastery and bring me fire, Lulim. We must strategize our plan of attack. For two weeks, Remand was advised about growing resentment in the countryside from peasants who called Morphia the Black Queen. But it was nothing that he had not heard before. His attention was on the pirates on the small islands of the coast called Callius Lar. They had been more brazen as late, attacking royal porches in organized raids. To deliver a crushing blow, he ordered the greatest part of his militia to invade the island, an incursion he himself would lead. A few days after Raymond left the capital, the revolt of the Trebite monks exploded. The attacks were well coordinated and without warning. The sheave of the guards did not wait to be announced, burst into Morkia's bedchamber ahead of a flurry of maidservants. My queen, he said, it is a revolution. By contrast, Kaelin was not asleep when Kale came to deliver the news. She was seated by the window, smoking her hookah and looking at the fires far off in the hills. Morkia is a witch, is with counsel, he explained. He. Morkia is with counsel, he explained. I am certain they are telling her that the Trepide monks are behind the uprising, and that the revolution will be at the city gates by morning. 
how large is the revolutionary army in contrast to the remaining royal militia? asked Elaine. The odds are well in our favor, said Kale, though not perhaps as much as we hoped. The country folk, it seems, like to complain about their queen, but stop short of insurrection. Primarily, the army is composed of the monks themselves and a horde of mercenaries your father's gold bought. In a way of thinking, it is preferable this way. They are more professional and organized than a common mob. Really, they are a true army, complete with a horn section. If that doesn't frighten the Black Queen into abdication, nothing will, smiled Kilaine, rising from her chair. The poor dear must be beside herself with worry. I must fly to her side and enjoy it. Ghislaine was disappointed when she saw Morgia come out of the council chambers, considering that she had been woken from a deep sleep with cries of revolution and had spent the last several hours in consul consultation for her meager general forge. She looked beautiful. There was a spark of proud defiance in her bright red eyes. My queen! Ghislaine cried, forcing real tears. I came as soon as I heard. Will we all be slaughtered? A distinct possibility, replied Morgia simply. Ghislaine tried to read her, but the expression of women, especially alien women, were a far greater challenge than those of Altmer men. I hate myself for even thinking to propose this, said Ghislaine, but since the cause of their fury is you, perhaps if you were to give up the throne they might disperse. Please understand, my queen, I am thinking only for the good of the kingdom and our own lives. I understand the spirit of your succession, smiled Morgia, and I will take it under advisement. Believe me, I've thought of it myself, but I don't think it will come to that. Have you a plan for defending us? asked Elaine, contorting her features to an expression she knew bespoke Curly's hope. The king left us several dozens of his royal battle mages, said Morgia. I think the mob believes we have nothing but palace guards and a few soldiers to protect us. When they get to the gates are greeted with a wave of wire poles, I find it highly likely that they might lose heart and retreat. But isn't there some protection they could be using against us an assault? Asked Elaine in her best worried voice. If they knew about it, naturally there is. But an unruly mob is unlikely to have mages skilled in the arts of restoration, by which they could shield themselves from the spells, or mysticism by which they could reflect the spells back on my battle mages. That would be the first scenario. But even if they were well organized enough to have mystics in their ranks, and enough of them to reflect so many spells, it just isn't done. No battlefield commander would advise us a defense during a siege unless he knew precisely what he was going to be meeting. And then, of course, once the trap is sprung, Morgia winked. It's too late for a countering spell. A most kind solution, your highness, said Gilead, honestly impressed. Morgia excused herself to meet with her battle mates, and Gilead gave her an embrace. Kale was waiting in the palace garden for his lady. Are there mystics among the mercenaries? She asked quickly. Several, in fact, rep replied Kale, bewildered by her query. Larger rejects from the psychic order, but they know enough to cast the regular spells of the school. You must sneak out of the city gates and tell Friar Lilum to have them cast reflection spells on all the front line before they attack, said Ghislaine. That's mostly a regular part of your strategy, frowned Gale. I know it is, fool. That's what Morgia is counting on. There's a gang of battle mages who are going to be waiting on the battle uh, battlements to create our army with the barrels of fireballs. I wonder if Morgia thought she might be on the wrong side and told something that might not be the case. Um, they will lose hard. And by lose, I obviously mean lose, because I'm a native speaker and we don't make mistakes. <laughs> totally. Uh, 
<laughs> I just didn't say question wording. Will we be? Will we all be slaughtered? Like, geez, could you use any other word? <laughs> like I always say, there's no s us without a lotter. Without lotter, yes. No slaughter without a lotter. Yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, absolutely. But usually it's a slaughterer, not the slaughterery. <laughs> True enough. But I kind of just feel that Morgia is on top of this and that she, this person, Kilain, is playing onto Morgia's hands. I hope. I hope, certainly, that to be the case at the very least. Hmm. Battle mates, I would have thought that King Remen would have brought them with him to fight the pirates. <sighs> it said laughter, stupid English, English laughter, slaughter and laughter, yes. Mm. You would have thought that, Lord Gillane, but then we would be defeated. Now go. Brian Lulim agreed with Kale that it was a bizarre and hard way to begin a battle, casting reflection spells on all one's troops. It went against every tradition, and as a trepid monk, he valued tradition about every other virtue. There was little other choice, though, given the intelligence. He had few enough healers in the army as it were, and their energies could not be wasted casting resistance spells. <laughs> in yes, yes. Mm. At dawn's light, the rebel army was inside of the gleaming spires of First Hold. Friar Lillum gathered together every soldier who knew even the rudimentary secrets of mysticism, who knew how to tap into the elementary conundrums and knots of the energies of magica. Though few were masters of the art, their combined force was powerful to behold. A great surge of entangling power washed over the army, Crackling, hissling, and infusing all with their ghostly force. When they arrived at the gates, every soldier, even the least imaginative, knew that no spell would touch him for a long time. Friar Lillian watched his army patter into the gate with the great satisfaction of a commander who has counteracted an unthinkable attack with an outrageous defense. The smile quickly faded from his face. They were met at the battlements, not by mages, but by common archers of the palace guard. As the flaming arrows fell upon the sieges like a red train, the healers ran in to help the wounded. Their healing spells reflected off the dying men, one after the other. Gaius ruled as the attackers suddenly found themselves defenseless, and began a panicked, unorganized retreat. Friar Lillem himself considered bravely holding his crown before fleeing himself. And yep, yeah, oh snap, that was an excellent, excellent tactic. You know that there's going to be uh, people in your court. <laughs> yeah, resistance spells backfired, absolutely. Or reflex spells, as in it was. It reflected... But yeah, it was fire. It just wasn't fire balls. It was fire arrows. But yeah, I was thinking that Morgia is going to be smarter than that. And just telling exactly the plans to the, someone in court that might very well be telling it forward. Do her enemies. <laughs> Flaming arrows. Help the wounded, the healing spells reflected off the dying men, one after the other. And so, a lot of them died, because of the reflections. Okay, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Later, he would send furious notes to Lady Glane and Gale, but they were returned. Even his best secret agents within the palace were unable to find their whereabouts. Mm. Neither had, as it turns out, much previous experience with torture, and they soon confessed their treachery to the king's satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Gail was executed, and Ghislaine was sent back with her score to her father's court of Skywatch. He has still to find a husband for her. Remen, by contrast, has elected not to take a new royal concubine. The common folk of Versthold considered this 
break in palace protocol to pay more of the sinister alien influence of the Black Queen and crumble to all who will listen. So yeah, she did happen to be a concubine, but uh, well, that kind of a concubine. A fir the first hold a revolt. Was an interesting one, I would say. Was an interesting one, wouldn't you agree? At least I enjoyed the story, clearly enough. We will not be reading the books that we got from there thus far, at least though. We will not be reading them immediately. Ah, Go ahead. Trebonius. I was thinking, hoping to find you. Let's ask about Trebonius from you too, though. All oh, this color that you don't get unless you read. Yep. Uh huh. Okay, so you don't have anything uh, bad to say about Trebonius. Fine enough. You're the first. But yeah, I like the story. And when you know already Barencia's uh, story and everything. Yeah, those books are genuinely interesting. I think that there's certain ones that are truly interesting and specifically these ones would tell about the real Barencia, the Barencia the queen, and then her children, the uh, kings and queens of Morrowind. Those are extremely interesting books, I would have to say. There's probably some others as well, but uh, it's nice to hear how what happened to Morki as well after she grew up a little bit. After all, last time that we read about her, she was a child. So, uh, you know, I kind of know something about the disappearance of the dwarves. Treponius Arturius. Aww. Should I have sec uh, separately asked about it from that guy? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I should have, but maybe I'll go and meet uh, with that person again at some point. Let's go do a Balmora in the meantime, though. The multi-sidedness is really interesting. No other media can really do that. Quite true. Go Hello, ahead. Ajira. Ajira knows that Felenseret is a good friend of Ajira. Yes, I'm a very good friend of Ajira. So, would you like to have me some duties, Ajira? Ah. Uh, Yes, Achira. Achira knows many secrets, but they are not yet for friend Felenseretti. Oh, still not. I thought that you were uh, for the Warlock level, not Conjurer level. Fine. I'll come back to you later, Achira. Good friend, Achira. <sighs> yeah, stupid bush. Blocking me always. But I like Achira. Achira is a good friend. Very good friend. There no, there's nothing you can do for me. Nothing you can do for me, though. <sighs> okay. <laughs> yes. Despite the love personality, at least Achira calls you a friend. And now he also isn't scared about my corpus disease anymore. Which is pretty great. And no corpus disease will again touch me because I already have the corpus disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. Yes, yes, your six houses rising and all that. I've heard the same. Just leave me alone, you stupid sixth house fellows. <laughs> Everybody loves Asira, apparently. Yep, everybody loves Asira. I love Asira. Asira is a nice, nice fellow. Ah, guys, go Hmm, I wonder how much you can manipulate players just through showing them those ratings. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Just you haven't wanted to clean up the assassin that attacked me while here. Oh no, the ash zombie that we visited. Yes, the ash zombie. Mm. Right. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. It's kind of a nice sight. Dude, you haven't even cleaned up. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you even do for all day? Well, probably just stand here. And uh, wait for us to arrive. 
it does nothing, absolutely nothing. Yep, ever. <laughs> First roommate ever. <laughs> yep. Felicity. Thank. Ah. Felicity. Thank you for your report. I'm very happy you've been cured. Unfortunately, I've had a bit of a bad news. I've been recalled to the Imperial City. You'll be promoted to operative and will head the blades here in Fardenville until I return. I've only waited here to give you your final orders before I go. Bro, I can't even count on you to clean up dead bodies. <laughs> yep. You've been recalled. Internal politics. Some concerns about my sugar. I thought about refusing to recall, but they have members of my family back in the capital. I'm afraid it may have something to do with the problems with the succession. As the Emperor's health declines, factions are maneuvering for advantage. I may be gone a while. That's why you're promoted to operative. Yes, yes, so I'm promoted to operative. That makes you the ranking pledge agent in the Fadenfeld district. As far as I know, there may be the other blade agents here I don't know about. It wouldn't surprise me. I may be gone a while and you'll have expenses. Here's some gold. And you can use the house until I return. And I won't be needing this uh, blacks or the ring while I'm sur in Surin deal. Maybe they'll come in handy. Take care, good care of them. Um, okay. 750 gold then. Caius's black pants, Caius's black shirt, Caius's ring. I'm not quite sure if I want to be using your pants and shirt, to be completely honest with you, but uh, I, 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 yes, thank you. So, uh, I'm the head of the blades now? There's nothing to it. Each agent has his own assignment and reports directly to Zuron Teal. You're promoted to operative mostly to preserve your independence. You're no fool. The day of the Empire almost over. When the Emperor dies, nine hells going to break loose. Forget about the Imperial City. Think locally. Worry about the Sixth House and the Dark Door, and squabbles between the Great Houses and the Colonists. The rest of the political nonsense doesn't amount to a plate of scuttle. Yeah, he's a sugar bro, yep. That's what he said about the sugar, <laughs> which is kind of funny. I bet he's not going to take the body with him when he's <laughs> go when he goes. Yeah, what a bum. I agree, 100%. Well, what is my final orders? Continue person to Neravarian prophecies as the Emperor commands. First, go to the Hall of Wisdom and Justice and get Meher Milo to help you find the lost prophecies. She's been watched. If something has gone wrong, find her private quarters. She'll leave you a message there until the gold word Amaya. Then take the lost prophecies to Nibani Maesa. From that point, you'll have to follow her directions and follow the prophecies. Good luck. So yay. I wonder, I guess he is going to be gone from this house too, I assume. Do you want to train me in something before you go? Oh, speedscraft would be very cheap. Sure. Let's train a little bit of speedscraft just for the fun of it. Maybe we will not be as sucky yeah, with it in the future. Let's at least train it to 10. I I trust that Caius Gosares is so good to speak. That we learn a lot from him. Absolute lots from him. Don't you actually? <laughs> okay. Well, I guess I gotta be cleaning this up then. <sighs> when you are going to be even leaving. Let's have a little bit of a rest. It's night after all. You wake. You hear something and sense the presence of a nutter nearby. <laughs> I just got rid of one of you guys. Now I got to get rid of another ass zombie. Ugh, dispose of you. <laughs> he 
He says that, but I bet he'll just hang around here shirtless as always. Seriously, bro, you couldn't even click the dispose of body button? Yep. <laughs> it's pretty easy to do the clean in here, I'd say. It's pretty easy. Doesn't take long at all. Let's just rest one more hour. So that it's a nicely morning. So, I hope I won't find you next time I come around into this house, because otherwise, I don't think I like it. It's my house now. <laughs> oh man, goddamn dead people. Yep, pretty much. Uh, let's see. So, I... Uh, let's see. Uh, for the my sneak. And chameleon. I kind of like that. It's just weird to be using his, like, shirts. 40 by luck, 20 points. 40 by security. Sure. I'll use the ring. Hmm. At some point. Well, I guess. Thank you, nonetheless. It's good as how now. Yep. Oh, dance on. <laughs> totally. Totally. 100%. But I think this is a pretty okay spot to be ending for today anyhow then. We got the house to ourselves. We are the boss now of ourselves. And uh, can do basically whatever we wish. We have even been basically cured from the corpus disease and everything. <laughs> Get it a home over. Anyhow. Mm, totally. Of course I will be getting a better house too. But... For now, this is our place. As long as this guy just actually goes and leaves from here at some point. Yes, let's have a house party. Let's go and get some sugar, moon sugar, take the kutskuma pipe and uh, get going. Because there's plenty of at least moon sugar here already. Rubber <laughs> little dub. Ah, yes. But okay, I'm not sure what I wish to do exactly next time. I think we should really be trying to go into here too, though. Somewhere, because I know that there's more of the Telvani places here. And I would really actually like to be starting in the Telvani guild. Yep, the Moonsugar explains a lot. Yes, plenty of Skuma and Moonsugar. So, yeah. I don't know if you can trust Caius in that sense that much. <laughs> yeah, Sukar, you bring the whiskey, Jim Jim. I'll bring board games because that's what people do at parties, right? Yeah, um, I would be happy with board games, so that works for me with Sineko. I'm, I'm sure others would be okay with that too. Jim Jim, Tayunta, board games? Yay? No? Yes? No? <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean, okay, good, good. Totally. Works perfectly. That sounds perfect. Yay! <laughs> okay. Well, it's a party. <laughs> Cards are also fine. Which is the bus tomorrow wind? That's a good question. I'm already here. I'm just waiting for you guys, so... Like... Just... You know, here in Palmora, just... Come into this, like, a place. It's not like this has a lot of space, like, a space in it. It's a little bit dirty, too, like, stuff on the ground and everything. Silver red spoon laying on the ground and everything, but... What can you say when it's Kai's Casades? Huh. Lock level 75, hmm. You say. Well, but anyways, okay. I shall be stopping now, though. <laughs> and continue the next time around for more. With more moral wind. <laughs> I think so, Jinji. Wait, I need to chase at the Silk Strider station, don't I? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed here in the stream. And later on in YouTube as well. Some more books, some more stories, some more <sighs> story going forward. A lot more books and stuff, but a lot of them were a lot she uh, like uh, cheaper indeed. A lot shorter. 
<laughs> there better be some moon secret left. Ah, maybe there is. Maybe there is. And Jim Jim, you gotta hurry so that you get some moon secret. And Kiitoksia, Tayuntaya Visineku, for sure, as well. And uh, alrighty, I shall be ending here the recording. And next time, then more.